Hi, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. My name is Mark, and I tink with bikes, and occasionally get to ride them too. Today's video is all about my 2018 Specialized Stump Jumper, and also a bit of riding at the Forest of Dean. It's weird to think, but five years has already passed since I bought this bike. It was my first full suspension, and I crashed it hard enough on my second ride out, and then knocked my confidence and fitness for a good couple of years. This year, I've been riding a lot more. The fitness is coming back, as is the confidence. But on one of the last rides out, me and my riding buddy were talking about our bikes. In five years, things have changed a bit. Our bikes still work perfectly for what oh we ride, God. but we both fancied a bit of an upgrade to keep things fresh. Sarah opted for a 12-speed SRAM NX group, keeping the same chaining size, <laughs> but adding more to the rear to help with climbing. Whereas I went for a 12-speed SRAM GX group, increasing both front chainring and rear cassette sizes to keep the same climbing ratio but add more speed. And of course, we both added a bit of BergTech bling. It's a nice simple swap to do, although I did have to read about more modern standards to make sure I got the right parts and double check on chain sizing for forces. But it's simple enough for anyone to give it a go in the garage. I think we both bought the parts brand new in the seemingly endless Chain Reaction Sales 2. Maybe they're the bike world's DFS. So the upgrade didn't cost too much either. Apart from my cassette. XD cassettes are expensive. But yeah, stick around, enjoy a bit of riding footage, and in between, I'll swap out the parts before we head back to FUD. Okay, so the swap. I'm currently running an 11 speed SRAM GX drivetrain with a 28 tooth ring up front and a 10 to 42 cassette on the rear. The bike is also running a SRAM XD freehood body and boost spacing. That's 12 by 148 millimeters Sorry. on the rear. Contrary to belief, you don't necessarily need these modern standards to run a 12 speed. SRAM NX cassettes still use the old Shimano Hyperglide hubs, so they do work on older 9-speed free hubs, as I've shown on my Cove handjob build. But you do have to compete with the chain line if you're using an older rig. Oh wow, that's tight. As I'm finding out here, SRAM XD cassettes don't have a lock ring. Instead, the cassette screws on and off the free hub body as one complete unit. The great thing is, it still uses an old Shimano lockering tool to remove, so I didn't have to go out and buy a new tool yeah, cool. just for this one part. Which can sometimes be the case with new standards. Of course, I'm giving a free hub a light clean and grease before screwing on the new SRAM GX cassette, which is the 10 to 50 tooth model. Does this go on a certain way or does it just plunk on? Just plunks on. Derailers just bolt on and bolt off. Nothing special here. Just double check the capacity, speed and shift as match and all should be good. Off camera I also tweaked the limit screws, which I should have really shown. That's done to line up the derailleur with the cassette and make sure it starts and stops in the same place. Thank you. 
changing the chain ring is next. My crank set is a race face effect and it's currently running the small 28 tooth ring. I th ah, think in a lot of cases now doctor. these crank but sets have not. built in self extracting yeah. bolts. But this one didn't. So I had to grab the crank extractor. Fortunately, it wasn't on there tight. Isn't she a dirty on the inside? Again, pretty thankful for this. But this race face cinch chain ring doesn't require its own special tool to undo. All you need is a regular Shimano bottom bracket tool, the old square taper style, and it comes right off. Lefty loosey, right tighty and all that. Another quick clean and my new slightly larger 30 tooth Bergtech chain ring can go on. I think I got this in the right orientation. It had a hole drilled near the mounting point so I did what you do with old triple rings and line up the hole with the cranker. And why there's a why there's a hole in this? I'm presuming because there's no notches there. Is it meant to go on that way? Maybe. A little bit of grease goes back on the barn bracket axle and the crank arm can go back on. Shifters, again, are a simple swap. Mine are the direct mount style where it mounts to the brake lever, so it's literally just swapping out one bolt. No need to take anything else off. You can still get the older design where it sits separate to the brake lever on its own mount, or you can buy an adapter. Love you, Cairns. Now, this is where I had to do my research, because sizing a chain for a full suspension bike is not just as simple as doing the whole big to big and adding two or four links trick. To size a chain correctly for a full sus, you have to release all pressure from the shock and compress the rear suspension fully. The reason being, if I've understood this right, as the suspension compresses, it pulls on the chain and also the derailleur, making it extend more. If the chain is too short, well, that's bad news for your derailleur if you end up going all the way through your bike's travel. Once I'd let all the pressure out, I ended up using a bunch of cable ties to try and hold the shock in the compressed position. It isn't shown as fully compressed, but I did manage to rig it up eventually, and get it compressed. I went through so many cable ties, and honestly, this step would be much easier with two people. With the suspension compressed, I wrapped the chain around the chain ring and the largest cog on the cassette, without going through the rear derailleur and I did two, or was it four, links. Schramm suggests two, but I think I initially added four extra so I could double check how the derailleur looked once it was all properly fitted to the bike.
Bowlings is not too, too bad. The question is, how does it look in See, that divide is fine. You can come forward more. This is at max compression as well. As it turns out, I added four links initially. The derailleur looked fine and had plenty of extra play in it. I wish I'd made a yeah, note to say whether I did or not, but I'm pretty sure I moved the extra two links to go not. back to SRAM's recommended chain sizing. Last thing to check was the B-limit screw, and SRAM make this handy tool. You set the bike at 20% sag, put the chain in the second largest cog, and with this tool fitted on the largest, the little arrow in the window should point to the centre of the jockey wheel. Super simple to set up, a little bit of tweaking with the cable tension to get the shift in crisp, and we're ready to ride again. Okay, about there. Check we get all gears. Seems to
Pocket the nuts and my phone's not going to go flying. Yep. And that's about it for today. The bike feels great and my confidence is growing, especially at the Forest of Dean. It's a two-hour drive to get down there, but the trails are so good. And on this one, we tried out some of the downhill trails for once. I'll definitely be back for more. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Until the next one, ride safe. So bad.